I am also interested to making some handboard sets of these paints and also the other brands that I have reviewed in the past and make them available in my Shopee store. So if you're interested, I'll be putting also my Shopee store link at the description box. Hello everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Today in this video, I'm going to be reviewing another watercolor set and without further ado, this is no other than the Grumbacker Academy watercolors. I got this set at dickblick.com for 30.11 US dollars or roughly 1,500 Philippine pesos. And this is a 10 color set that has 7.5 ml tubes. I unboxed this set together with my Utrecht and my Pelican watercolors. And if you want to check out the unboxing video and the reviews of those two other brands, I'll be linking them here. Aside from the 10 colors of this set, I also purchased two more at Art Bar. And here are the colors that I got. I got Sap Green and Burnt Umber because I feel like the set needs this color to be uh, more complete and balanced. And now I have 12 colors from Grumbacker Academy. If you want direct access to those stores, I'll be linking it here. And also, I'll be trying to link other stores that I will be finding online. The Grumbacker Academy has 60 colors in their line. Their website provides product information such as pigment codes, pigment name, and the individual color description, which I find very useful. I find it kind of unusual though that the Grumbacker Finest, which is the professional grade of Grumbacker, only has 54 colors when the student grade or the academy has 60 colors. I have not thoroughly checked yet all the 54 colors of the finest and the 60 colors of the academy but upon quickly checking the 60 colors of the academy I discovered that many of the colors are hues or an imitation of a more expensive pigment and also it's my first time to find hues for earth colors. So now let's check the box. Of course in front we'll find here Grumbacker which is the brand name and here's the logo I think it's a letter G. And we have here a preview of what's inside. So these are the tubes and they're protected by this plastic sheet. And it says here watercolor paints, palette, and brush. So obviously these are the contents of this box. It says here 12 pieces, not 12 colors or not 12 tubes, 12 pieces. So that means we have here 10 tubes. And the other two is the brush and the mixing palette. And here it says Academy with a big letter A. So I think that is the symbol for the Academy line. And on this side, we have um, the same information, the brand name, same information, and the brand name again. At the back, we have here again, of course, the brand name. And it says here, this set contains one brush, one mixing tray, 10 7.5 ml tubes of Academy watercolor paint. And here are the same information in two different languages and down here it says www.grumbacker.com so this is the website and here is the address and now here are the 10 colors in this set we have a silhouette preview of what's inside and also mixing palette and it says here it conforms to ASTM D4236 and also aside from this set I purchased two more tubes from Art Bar and uh, just one tip to sellers, please, please, please avoid putting your price tags or price stickers in areas where there are useful information because us artists need to see this before we buy your items. Like in this tube, the pigment code is covered in the sap green um, tube and here I already removed the sticker and uh, the area that was covered was this part where we find the pigment code and the vehicle used that's a shout out to the sellers anyway let's uh, take out the items in this set so here is the brush it's a uh, nylon brush I think and it's a size 6 round it says here Grumbacker Academy 775 round Plat curry quadrado. So, what does that mean? But I think this is obviously a uh, round brush and it looks good. Now, for the main event, 
here is our tube set where is the pallet oh it's here oops sorry so it's not actually a sturdy pallet it's like it's very flimsy but it's like a, a toy case but I think this is usable and uh, we are gonna be using it later so here are the tubes and here are my two additional tubes so now let's check an individual tube their tubes are made out of aluminum painted white and in front you'll find here the brand name Grumbacher the logo the big letter A and Academy it says here watercolor aquarelle aquarellas and the color name in three different languages and we also have here a number code I think this is the color code and it says here 0.25 fluid ohms and 7.5 ml and at the back now it's exposed here because it doesn't have the price tag and the price sticker it says here PY42 which is the pigment code for yellow ochre and um, I don't know what this um, symbol is about is it the same with the others? I think they're all the same. It's covered. So if you know what these symbols mean, please let us know at the comment box. And here they also provided the vehicle information. So this paints used gum Arabic. And it says here, of course, made in US. And of course, now for our sample painting, I'm using, as always, Arches 185 Gold Press Cotton Paper. And for the brush, I have here my Da Vinci Pure Kolinsky 1503 Size 5 Travel Brush and my Raphael Precision Brush Size 2. And to make this quicker, I'll be dotting down our paints on our swatches. Now let's do our swatches. So let's begin with Chinese white which uses PW4. Of course this is expected to be more on the opaque side. Now we have cadmium yellow pale hue. So this doesn't use a real cadmium color. Instead it uses PY3 and PY97. Next we have Grumbacher Red which uses PR170 and PR188. Now we have Alizarin Crimson which uses PR83. This is a beautiful red color. It's the classic Alizarin Crimson but unfortunately this is not light fast but many artists still use this up to this day and many trusted brands still use this and some of those brands are Daniel Smith, M. Graham and Winsor & Newton now we have ultramarine blue of course using PB29 next we have cobalt blue hue and this is using also PB29 so this is not a real cobalt blue color because a real cobalt blue color is PB28 so let's see if there is gonna be obvious difference between these two colors because they're just the same pigment but in my observation there are at least two popular known shades of uh, PB29 the other one is the red shade and the other one is the green shade so I hope we have here the two versions next we have Thalo green PG7 I did not misspell this I just copied what was written in their tube so here so that's how they spelled it Next is Sap Green, which uses four pigments, PO48, PY150, PB15, S24, and PG7. Now we have 
PY42 yellow ochre. Of course, this is opaque. But surprisingly, it's not very opaque. And it's nice. It's very uh, near to the yellow um, shade rather than the earth. Now we have burnt sienna, which uses PBR7. By the way, the sap green was one of the additional colors. Now we go to Burnt Umber, which is also additional color. I was actually uh, more interested to getting the Raw Umber. But unfortunately, I remember the Raw Umber was made out of two pigments. And so that makes it a Raw Umber hue, if I remember correctly. So uh, I would love to have a single pigment here. So I got the PBR7 Burnt Umber. So lastly, we have here Ivory Black. We're done with our swatches and while we are waiting for the swatches to dry, let's now proceed to our sample painting. So for this sample painting, I'm going to be using the tray that they provided and the colors that I'm using are Yellow Ochre, Sap Green, Taylor Green, Burnt Sienna, Cobalt Blue Hue, Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, a bit of Grumbacker Red here from the excess, and also Cadmium Yellow Pale Hue. Now it's dry, we can now remove our tape. So for the color selection, they have one white, one yellow, two reds, two blues, two greens, three earth colors, and a black. For the color selection, I can actually work with this. I can tolerate the selection, although I have some suggestions. First is to uh, replace white with a golden yellow or a warm yellow. I think that's going to be more useful. And I would also like to replace PR83 with a PV19 based red because it's more light fast than the original PR83 although this is really beautiful next is I'd be happier to replace PB29 cobalt blue hue with a turquoise blue color although I can uh, mix these two to make a close to turquoise color like the one we used in our beach but I don't see any uh, advantage into having these two colors here pb29 um i think they're really close although they're distinguishable but yeah i got a sap green because i think this is very beneficial and i'd like to compare these soon with the other sap greens from the other brands and for the yellow ochre i think this is my most <laughs> commendable color here because it's so transparent and that's not usual for py42 so i'm happy with the yellow ochre here the burnt sienna is also beautiful pbr7 it's really uh, earthy it's really strong although it's semi-opaque the burnt umber is also nice it's real burnt umber pbr7 and uh, finally the ivory black pbk9 it's not very strong but 
it's okay now when it comes to the vibrancy of the colors I think obviously they're very bright there's very minimal uh, drying shift and the uh, intensity of the colors when it comes to the texture I think I love the texture of the sap green here the ultramarine blue is a real ultramarine blue it has granulation but I've also noticed that it's very opaque in uh, heavy mass tone that's very opaque I think that's the fillers speaking very loudly but yeah I really love the color so I would really suggest you to use this in uh, washes not very thick uh, mass tones and that's the same for the cobalt blue but I think yeah they're very opaque these two colors and also the cadmium pale hue if you use too much of it it's gonna be opaque but in washes they're fine they're transparent so I think we should be using this in uh, in lighter washes anyway they're gonna be vibrant and saturated even if you uh, only use them in light washes especially the Grumbaco Red and the Alizarin Crimson they're very pigmented the Chinese White of course is opaque the only very transparent colors here are the PR83 and the Yellow Ochre which is surprising for this and also Sap Green is more of a transparent color so these three are transparent but I love the Earth colors and they're my favorite in the selection the colors are strong so you don't actually need to put too much paints in your paper to be able to achieve or show the color they don't actually move and I've observed that earlier but if you help them a bit they're gonna be fine and now of course for our chalky test I have here a piece of a napkin and we are gonna be rubbing it against our swatches and sample painting to see if these paints are chalky so let's do this if we get paints then that means these are chalky so let's see and I think we did not get any traces of colors here or pigments and we have already damaged the paper so I think they can be a bit opaque but they're not chalky so that's a good sign now let's go to our favorite portion which is the comparison part and for the first set let's go with the sets that are less performing as compared to the Grumbacker Academy and for this let's begin with the bottom 8 so for this we have the Best Buy watercolors I think it's very obvious it's starting to lose the pigments <laughs> and next we have the Symbolion watercolors then we have Dong A Creative then we have Sterling Arts your Joni watercolor cakes, the Faber Castell solid watercolors, the Sakura Koi pocket filled sketchbox, and the Reeves watercolors. Our next set of paints are also less performing as compared to the Grumbacker Academy. And for this, we have the Faber Castell tubes, Pebeo Studio watercolors, Pentel watercolors fine, the Marie's watercolors, Marie's watercolor in pans, Majiwa basics. Art Ranger watercolors, the Lefranc and Bourgeois Louvre watercolors, the Prang 2019, Prang 2007, the Kure Gansai Tambi, and the Pelican transparent watercolors that we reviewed the other day. Now let's go to the set of paints that are very much comparable to the Grumbacker Academy and visually this set may actually look better because they're more vibrant and they're more transparent in general but unfortunately they're not able to provide the pigment codes so I'm not sure if these are gonna be light fast or if the paints are made out of dye or pigment so I prefer paints that are very transparent when it comes to the information and the materials used so yeah I think I'm still choosing the Grumbacher Academy as compared to these following set. So first we have the Simi Art Solid Watercolors 50s, the Simi Art Arts Arch Watercolors, the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors, the Superior Watercolors in Half Pans, the Miyahimi Solid Watercolors, the Superior Foldable Watercolors, the Superior Fan Palette watercolors, the Pretty Excellent watercolors, and the Koinor and Linky Brilliant watercolors. Now let's go to the set of student grade paints that are very much comparable to the Grumbacker Academy visually and technically. 
So, let's begin with the Windsor and Yunnan, China. Both of them provided the codes and both of them performed really well. The Windsor and Yunnan, China are more transparent but I prefer the texture of the Grumbacher Academy and also they're more punchy, they're more vibrant. So, I'm choosing the Grumbacher Academy. And now, let's go to the Sonnet Watercolors. Both are vibrant, both provided pigment coats. Not every pigment they used are strong so I think I can give this a, a draw but since Sonnet are more transparent and are far cheaper I'm choosing Sonnet and also we have the Windsor and Newton Cutman this is very controversial because they're very comparable the colors of the Grumbacher Academy are stronger they're more vibrant but the uh, Windsor and Newton colors are cleaner and I believe the pigments used are stronger I am choosing Winsor Newton Cotman and now my favorite student grade paints these are the Van Gogh 20 new colors and the Van Gogh 12 plus 3 half pants the intensity and the vibrance of the colors are very comparable and at some point Grumbacher Academy is even more punchy but the colors from Van Gogh are cleaner and their texture from tubes is more consistent here in the Philippines Pango is 3 US dollars for 10 ml while the Grumbacher Academy is 7.5 ml for 6 US dollars. Yes, 297 Philippine pesos from Art Bar or 260 something from M. Enriquez. But anyway, I'm choosing Van Gogh. Now for the last set, we have our artist grade paints. Of course, these are artist grade paints, so automatically they're better, but still I have opinion. So let's start. We have here the Kokuyo Kamlin. They did not provide the pigment code, but it's very obvious that they're performing much better. And I know they used pigments here because I can see and I can feel, especially in French Ultramarine. So I'm choosing Kokuyo Kamlin. Now we have the Lucas Aquarel. The colors are not that strong. I think they are falling to the bottom. Um, in my artist grade paints ranking unfortunately but if you look at the swatches they're more uniform they're more consistent the pigment selection is I think stronger they have real uh, cadmium colors here and uh, I'm not sure if they have real cobalt in their line but this is a real cadmium pigment so I think for that they are a step higher so I think I still trust Lucas Aquarel 1862 now we have Prima Marketing Tropicals. The vibrancy is comparable and not all the pigments in their selection are strong. So I think I can give this a draw. Transparency wise, I'd go with Prima. Next we have the Mary's Masters Watercolors, the artist grade of Mary's. Sorry, I have not yet edited this part. It should be Mary's. Anyway, both of them used hues in their cobalt um, colors. They actually look very comparable but I think the colors of Marys are more appealing so I'm choosing the Marys now let's go with the Paul Rubens watercolors I think this is no contest I'm choosing Paul Rubens they're very cheap the colors are clean and they have you know stronger pigment selection now let's have Mangyo professional watercolors this is also very comparable some of the colors here are not very light fast as well but majority of the colors are more on the transparent side so I think I'm gonna be uh, choosing the Mongyo watercolors next we have the blocks extra fine watercolors I'm choosing blocks also with the white knights watercolor tubes the white knights by st. Petersburg in full pans also with the Isaro extra fine watercolors I'm choosing these over Grumbacher of course with the Rembrandt Luxury Pocket Box, the Windsor and Newton Professional, the Egal Yohani Watercolors, the Core Watercolors of course, the Holbein Watercolors, the Mission Gold, Mijello Pure Pigment, and the uh, Mission Gold 36 Colors. Of course these are my preferred brands. The Daniel Smith Alvaro Castanet and the Daniel Smith Essential Set. And of course, the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolors in Sticks. So, those are my opinions about the comparison. By the way, I think I want to compare. 
So this is the real PB28 Cobalt Blue. You can see the difference um, between the Cobalt Blue PB29 of Grum Bucker. You can see that the Cobalt Blue of Daniel Smith which uses the real Cobalt Blue pigment is very transparent and uh, even the ultramarine blue you can see that the upper part which got more paints because it's mass stone part are very opaque as compared to these two so yeah you see the difference so this actually makes me more you know curious to trying out the grumbacker artist grade or the finest i'm gonna be targeting to uh, trying out those even uh, only for uh, of colors maybe so if you are gonna ask me would I recommend the Grumbacker Academy watercolors my answer is yes but I have some notes for you if you live in the States then these are nice student grade paints because the colors are alive they're not the most transparent student grade paints but they're workable because the colors are strong you can uh, do lighter washes you can avoid heavy mass tones to achieve transparency still and i think i was able to prove that in my sample painting in van gogh you get more but at some point some colors are punchier in uh, grom becker academy none of those student grade paints are bad choices so it's just a matter of luck where you're coming from where you're which is available in your area which is cheaper so you can weigh those considerations now if you are a professional artist I think um, if you want to use the Grumbacker Academy please choose your pigments well and I think you're good to go and if you can please choose the finest even if I have not tried it I think it's always a better choice to use the artist grade version or the artist grade lines of any brand so I think we're done for today and the brand that I'm gonna be reviewing next is Utrecht please tell me in the comment section how to pronounce that properly because Americans say it's Utrecht Utrecht but I heard some pronunciations also from European um, youtubers they say it's a truck a truck um, anyway I'll do my research I hope I uh, pronounce it right once I do my review and I'm gonna be doing that in two days and once available if you happen to watch this video on a later date it's already linked here so yeah that's all for today again thank you for watching and see you on the next video